let's let's proceed further now so measure phase is uh, is very very important as i said earlier because uh, as mentioned by lord kelvin and he is the uh, one of the renowned mathematicians and uh, physicist who talk about that when you can measure what you are speaking about and express it in numbers you know something about it but when you cannot express it in numbers your knowledge is of a unsatisfactory kind which means if i don't know what i am measuring or what i am improving if i don't have that uh, numbers in it okay i will not be able to measure not be able to improve so for example if i say i want to improve my process i if i say if i if i want to improve the customer satisfaction score if i want to improve the customer attrition or employee attrition okay or customer retention unless and until i don't know where i currently stand i will not be able to improve it so in the measure phase itself we look at the quantum of the data that we have okay we measure it with different different techniques and with the help of that we conclude that whether this data is good to go or not so that's why it is uh, very very important to ensure that what we are measuring so uh, there are three basic questions that we should try and answer in the measure phase as we talked about earlier first is what to measure okay what i'm measuring second is how to measure and third is how to ensure what we are measuring is correct the first two questions which is what to measure and how to measure is answered by the data collection plan and the last question which is how to ensure is answered by msa msa is called measurement system analysis we will talk about in detail that what is measurement system analysis what are the types of measurement system analysis uh, but just now you should and that this is a technique which helps me to uh, calculate that what the data that i'm measuring is good to go for analysis on so this is such an important thing that i'll be looking at okay so let's look at the data collection plan that we have so first and foremost we should know we should ask a question you should ask a question from me that why are we preparing a data collection plan in the major phase okay data collection plan consists of various matrix various items which clearly talks about that the project that i have identified okay will have certain basic requirements which would have certain characteristic which would help me to identify the data that i have collected is good enough okay so that's what is the importance of data collection plan so i will show you the data collection plan template uh, i just want to give you the introduction that why data collection plan is required in the data collection plan we have the first thing which is called the operational definition okay uh, what do you think what comes to your mind when we say the operational de definition what do you think is operational definition have you ever heard this term before operational definition uh similarly in the example that we were discussing on the tat and the customer satisfaction thing so we can talk about the customer satisfaction which is the like the measure of like uh, um, overall uh, satisfaction of the customer interaction with the organization so we can talk about it as operational definition operational definition of what uh operational definition uh, like it's it's like a, a measure of the like the overall satisfaction okay uh, so here we will let's say let's take the first example so turn around time is something that we are interested in getting data on so we will define what the turn around time is in here this is a okay. process identification right any object that we are working on yes so just to summarize to what all you said operational definition so please understand that right now we haven't identified any sort of causes for our problem okay we were in the define phase till last week we have entered into the major phase so for example if i have so when we do the training we will do in in a sort of way that we are doing a project also so let's say you are doing a project on improving the cycle time okay now your project sponsor and champion has given you a go ahead that yes you you can do this project now you have entered into a measure phase now you are preparing a data collection plan to move ahead so that you want 
each and everybody to to know that where the data is coming from, what is this data all about, and such and so forth. The first and foremost thing that we're preparing is the operational definition. Operational definition of my project Y, of my metric that I'm going to work upon. So the example that we've taken is the turnaround time. So now we want to write the operational definition. So there's a difference between definition and operational definition. Operational definition is a definition which is same for everyone. Okay. So for example, if in a group, if I ask you the definition of TAT, you would say that definition could be uh, when customer plays a request till the time we give a resolution to the customer. This could be one operational definition. This could be one definition. But the next person says it starts from when we put the order in the system till the time we completed the customer request. Okay. Somebody can say my definition of TAT is to be when customer thought that I will, when customer mentioned a letter or, or sent a letter that I want to, uh, you know, make that uh, changes in my, in my account till the time when the customer got the dispatch that yes, your request gets resolved. So every person has a different definition of that. Okay. So, so just imagine now you have all the cross function team members in front of you. In the defined phase, we only prepare a project charter. We define that turnaround time is one metric which we are going to work upon. But now nobody has a clear understanding on how we calculate turnaround. What is the exact operational definition of turnaround? So in the operational definition, we clearly describe that what is the definition of turnaround time? It means this is which is the which is so that it doesn't have any kind of ambiguity, so that all the project team members, everybody remains on the same page. That how have we calculated the definition, the operational definition of a project metric, which is project Y. So that's what we have to mention in the operational definition, so that everybody gets to know that how we have calculated it. What do we consider the operational definition? Okay, I mentioned it's a precise definition of each and every parameter against the performance will be judged. It helps removes ambiguity so that everybody has the same understanding. Okay. Second thing which we mentioned in the define in, uh, in the uh, data collection plan is the performance standard. Okay, a performance standard is is the specification which is mentioned by the customer. Okay which is the limit that which customer says uh, it is a limit from which lies from customer satisfaction to customer disappointment. So uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, there is LSL which stand for lower specification limit. And there is a term which is USL which stand for upper specification. So for example, if my customer says that I want my request to be resolved within 30 to 45 minutes. So I'm giving you a buffer. So 30 is my lower specification limit and 45 is my upper specification. So that is my performance standard that we will. So we will talk about in detail uh, that what is the significance of USL and LSL in the, in the upcoming uh, phases. Uh, so that's what we have to mention in the, uh, in the data collection plan that what is my specification? What is my LSL and what is my USL? Okay. Then the third thing that we mentioned in the uh, data collection plan is the defect definition, which means when do I call the project metric as a defect? So likewise, the example that we have taken for turnaround time, the example could be when we could not resolve the customer query within 30 minutes or maybe within one hour or maybe within 24, 24 hours, whatever uh, the standard that we have taken below that it would be a defect. Okay. So it is, it is more like a statement of the defect in the project and it helps us in identifying the situation in which the parameter will be considered as a defect. So we have to clearly mention that when do we call this as a defect? So that is also needs to be mentioned so that each and every team member should be able to understand that when are we saying it is a, it has a defect. 